Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Wednesday the 3rd of March 2021 and we're looking at gold falling even further and stocks too, especially tech stocks taking a considerable hit. So let's take a look. Now yesterday, we produced a video entitled Silver Crashes Below $26 and Gold Heads for $1,700 and then both recover, where we pointed out that silver, despite falling into the late $25 region, recovered most of its losses and stood at $26.77, while gold stood at $17.35, the same as Friday's close, despite falling back earlier in the day. Well, at the time of writing, which is 2130 GMT, gold has fallen further to $1,715, down some $20, but having been as low as $1,702, even lower than yesterday's low of $1,707. And in fact, $1,702 was the lowest since June of last year. Now, silver stands at $2,617 clearly intent on aiming to breach lower than the $26 resistance level again, having reached the same low as yesterday at $25.85, albeit momentarily. The dollar index yesterday stood at 90.72 and currently it's up, only slightly, but it's up at 90.96, having actually breached 91 for a short while during the course of today. Equity markets yesterday were broadly down, but generally under 1%. And today the losses are a little higher, ranging from a half a percent, as in the case with the Dow at 31,270, 1.3% down with the S&P 500 at 3,819, and 2.7% down as the case with the Nasdaq Composite at 12,997. UK and European markets closed marginally up. As far as equities are concerned, the Nasdaq was hardest hit after investors sold what some may call high-flying technology shares and pivoted to sectors viewed as more likely to benefit from an economic recovery on the back of fiscal stimuli and vaccination programmes. In fact, Reuters reported today, quote, Microsoft Corp. Apple Inc. and Amazon.com dropped, weighing more than any other stocks on the S&P 500. The S&P 500 financial and industrial sector indices reached intraday record highs. Most other S&P 500 sectors declined. The Russell 1000 Value Index, which leans heavily on economy-linked sectors, edged up while its growth index, comprising large tech companies, lost ground. Quote, today is the perfect encapsulation of the big theme we've been seeing in the past couple of months. The vaccine rollout is going well and the economy improving, and that is sending yields and rate expectations higher, which is hurting growth stocks, unquote, said Baird investment strategist Ross Mayfield. The U.S. economic recovery continued at a modest pace over the first weeks of this year, with businesses optimistic about the months to come and demand for housing robust. But only slow improvement in the job market, the Federal Reserve reported. While the vaccine distribution is expected to help the economy, data showed U.S. private employers hired fewer workers than expected in February, suggesting the labor market was struggling to regain speed. Another report showed US services industry activity unexpectedly slowed in February amid winter storms, while a measure of prices paid by companies for inputs surged to the highest level in nearly 12 and a half years. The US 10-year Treasury yield ticked up again to 1.47%, pressurizing areas of the market with high valuations. However, it was still off last week's peak of just above 1.61%, 1 
that roiled stock markets as investors bet on rising inflation. Rising interest rates disproportionately hurt high growth tech companies because investors value them based on earnings expected years into the future and high interest rates hurt the value of future earnings more than the value of earnings made in the short term. So clearly if inflation is on the horizon and higher rates to tackle that expected then one can expect the tech stocks to fall potentially quite heavily. And in fact, last year we published a video about NASDAQ leading the way for the stock market decline when it does eventually come in. And this is one of the key reasons, apart from also it being very highly rated anyway, but this is one of the key reasons we covered that. Quote, there is a definite headwind for equity markets if yields go above the 1.5% level with most investors keeping an eye on the pace of yield growth, unquote, said Michael Stritch, Chief Investment Officer, BMO Wealth Management. President Joe Biden's proposed $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief bill would phase out $1,400 payments to high-income Americans in a compromise with moderate Democratic senators, according to lawmakers and media reports. Now, the ADP employment report announced earlier today, though, was disappointing for February coming in at 117,000 new jobs compared with 195,000 in January. And the ISM services index for February was announced at 55.3% compared with 58.7% in, in January. So we have to bear in mind that the manufacturing indices were higher, which were announced earlier in the week. In spite of these disappointing figures, though, the Fed reported today, quote, the U.S. economic recovery continued at a modest pace over the first weeks of this year, with business optimistic about the months to come and demand for housing robust, but the job market showing only slow improvement. Economic activity expanded modestly from January to mid-February for most of the Fed's 12 regional districts, the U.S. Central Bank said in its latest beige book. Most businesses remain optimistic regarding the next 6 to 12 months as COVID-19 vaccines become more widely distributed. Unquote. Now the Fed's FOMC will meet again in two weeks. And there is some suspicion that it may become less dovish, at least with its words, if not its actions as the US economy continues to improve. Now, interestingly, Bitcoin rose above $52,000 earlier today. And even now, it's still significantly higher than it was at $51,565. Less than a week ago, when Bitcoin seemed to be falling and people were marking the end of its recovery, we did point out to expect a rebound but admittedly it's come back even quicker again than we thought it has an ability to do this but we're out perhaps a week or so whereas many others are predicting its death now we still see it heading towards that 85,000 target that has been mentioned by a number of analysts in previous months now yesterday we stated that quote our suspicion, unless there is further dollar weakness, is that gold will continue to be under pressure for the next day or so. End quote. Well, this has happened and may very well continue again tomorrow. That said, the non-farm payrolls on Friday may be decisive or determinable in that if they are poor, it may stop gold's retreat. But if they are positive or good, which... In view of today's ADP report, would be a little surprising, though not out of the court, then gold may indeed have further to fall and certainly below that crucial $1,700 level. Technically, gold resistance is seen near prior trend line support at 1765. Target support is seen near the June lows at $1,670. 
we suspect gold will head for this lower support level. Whether it reaches it or not is another matter. Silver has a degree of support at $26 and $25.85 beneath it. An extremely strong support at the 200-day EMA of $24. There is naturally resistance at the psychological $28 and a multitude of points, frankly, between where it is now and that $28 psychological level. Silver needs to get back above the 50-day EMA to have a chance to gain upside momentum in the near term. If silver settles above this level, it will get to test the next resistance at 2670. A move above the resistance at 2670 will push silver towards the resistance which is located near the 20-day EMA at 27. As mentioned, a lot of positions between here and $28. We shall cut it here. I think enough has been said for now. If you have any comments, please do share them. Where do you think stocks are heading? Will their decline continue? Will gold continue to fall and actually breach that 1700 level? And will we once again see silver in the $25 range? Do share your thoughts. And as always, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.